And as you know well, the biggest drug epidemic in America's history was created right here in America by the pharmaceutical companies. Yes. Well, that's how I found out about you from yeah. the OxyContin Express. Yeah. That that was so eye-opening. And when you did that, what, what channel were you guys on back then? Current TV was Al Gore's television channel. It was Al Gore's? <laughs> it was. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was actually a really interesting experiment. So it was right before YouTube started. Mm. And basically they were trying to, the idea was democratizing television. It was giving young kids out there a platform to go out there and explore the world and come back with these stories. So that's how I started. What um, year was this? This was 2005 or six. Oh, wow. 2005 when it was when I started, yeah. Mm. Um, so a long time ago. And then YouTube came around. <laughs> it turns out that YouTube was a bigger success than yeah. current TV. But I really, the show that I worked on was called Vanguard. And it was all these young journalists who most of us had just graduated, but they basically gave us cameras. And in my case, my husband at the time was my boyfriend. We both applied. They hired us both. And then we traveled all around the world. He would film. I would be on camera. And then we'd come back. I'd edit. He'd write. We'd do these stories together. Mm. And one of the stories we did was the prescription pill story, uh, the Oxycontin Express, which is how we met because we yeah. tweeted about it. Well, I think your work really changed the way people were aware of that problem in Florida. And they it changed the laws because they yeah. didn't have databases back then, which was 100% on, on purpose. Yeah. So you could go from, yes. you could go doctor shopping. You could yeah. go from pill mill to pill mill or pain clinic to pain clinic to buy prescription pills. The amazing thing is my husband is still reporting on this. He's actually had a film on CNN that's coming also on HBO Max uh, in April and it's called American Pain. So I don't know. Do you remember the the, the twins that were running American Pain? It was the biggest uh, pill mill or um, uh, prescription pain clinic in in South Florida. It's called American Pain. And it was run run by these two twins who were mm. born, they were born conjoined twins at birth. And then they ran a, a steroid business and they got in trouble. And then they realized that actually they could make a lot more money from selling Oxycontin than they could from selling steroids. So they opened this little small strip mall clin uh, uh, pain clinic. And as you saw, you know, people started coming in from all over the country and buying and the doctors wouldn't even look at them and they were prescribing pills like it was Tic Tacs. And this, we, we found out about them because we were reporting in Kentucky and we were the sheriff who was, you know, overdoses all around them, people, you know, dying, devastating his community. And a lot of the pill bottles had this name, American Pain. And we started, we went down there and we took out the camera and he, my husband took out the camera and we, the first shot we got immediately within minutes, this big SUV came with two big guys who were threatening us and started yelling us and telling us to leave that we weren't allowed to film. So we drove off and I'm driving and this is actually in the film, uh, but I'm driving and my husband's filming and they're right behind us. And we, they, we decided to film this as the last thing we, we were heading to the airport. And we're driving down I-85 to head to the airport, and they start following us. And then I realize I have very little gas. So I stop at the gas station, and they stop right behind us, and they come out of the car. And these were big guys. And the day before, I'd, we'd been watching The Sopranos. <laughs> So in my mind, they were coming out guns and blazing and they were going to kill us both. So I drove off. I was so nervous and I drove off and they continued following us and I didn't put gas in the car. So we're on 995 and we called 911 and said, hey, we're being followed by this car and to explain the situation. And then I ran out of gas oh my as God. we were filming and I pulled over to the curb, but they were so sort of surprised, shocked, they had no idea, confused by what was happening, that they just parked behind us and came out of, and they never came out of the car, and then the police arrived. And then they made up an excuse that they thought I was an old girlfriend or something like that. But we, my husband took down their license plates and found out their names, and it was the George brothers, Jeff and Chris George, who were running the biggest prescription or pill mill in America's history. They were making, I think, something like $40 million a year out of this small little pill mill pain, you know, strip mill clinic. And, uh, and it was incredible. And then, and then a year later, they were, they're now, do, they, one of them just left prison and the other one was still in prison. So they those were, were the guys that were following you, the guys that owned the organization. Yeah, owned American Pain. Wow. Our organization was just a strip mall clinic, pain oh. clinic with thousands of patients that would come in and out and, you know, tons of doctors writing prescription pills. And when we were working at the time where we'd been interviewing uh, off the record, a DEA agent who didn't want to go on the record, 
that we later found out was actually investigating them, and they had wiretaps. So in my, Darren's movie, uh, is the, he got his hands on all the wiretaps, so you could hear them. And part of it, there's a part where they talk about us and our film and how we were trying to uh, look into them. So it all sort of came. So yeah, That's it, South Florida Pain yeah, Clinic. Yeah, so it's South Florida Pain Clinic, and then they changed to a new location, a okay. bigger location, and called it. Uh, uh, yeah. That's it. I God, called it American such, Pain. Such a what a great name, by the way. Yeah, American and that's, Pain. And, that's, and those are the two brothers down there the with film. the fish. Yep, that's the two brothers. Those are the guys that were chasing you. Yeah. Wow. Well, they found a loophole. It's a crazy story. So they're in prison, and Darren t- he sends them an email and says, "Hey guys, remember that guy that you chased down nine ninety five? I'm doing a film about you. Do you want to be interviewed?" And they did. It's a great film. <laughs> what did they say? Did they just spill the beans about what they did? And they talked a lot about sort of how they grew up and why they did it. Um, it's yeah, I think it's interesting. When they had already gotten in trouble, so they had really nothing to lose at that point. But and what wasn't what they were doing legal? No, it was uh, what they were. So that is the difficulty, and that's why actually so little people so there should have been a lot more people that went to prison unfortunately they didn't so the government gets you through other things racketeering charges bribery mail fraud Mm. it's always these other that's the you know the biggest i think outrage about the whole opiate crisis is that there have been almost no no pharmaceutical executive that has been gone to prison the pharmaceutical companies are the ones that were actually making the big money right and it's not just the sacklers of purdue it's also the generic companies that were making even more and uh and no one went nobody was actually i mean they nothing practically happened to them no one did time in prison and it's so sad when you find out how many people lost their lives and how many people even if they're alive their lives are destroyed I mean, Joe, having traveled and exp- reported on this, um, the opiate crisis for so long, it's whole communities that have been devastated. 